All right. Well, Google is expanding its disinformation campaign in Germany and India because the one they did in Poland they thought was really successful. They are literally calling this inoculation. They are inoculating you and users from misinformation. Now, like other things that you use for inoculation, we can consider it a information vaccine, right? It, it makes you more able to cope with misinformation. It doesn't stop the spread of misinformation. It just makes you less susceptible to it. You see what I did there? Oh, I uh, see. But they are using these words, not me. They literally call it their inoculation campaign. Um, these are videos that Google produces and they run on Facebook. So Facebook's in bed with this too, YouTube and TikTok. Google makes them to counter information that it does not like. Information about what? Well, according to the Associate Press, topics include COVID, immigration, climate change, elections. So I thought here, if I give you this little quiz here. Now, Google says they started with this test pilot. So look at this um, option here. What subject amongst these subjects do you think that they started with? Given these options, what, what do you think they started a misinformation test campaign with? Google pre distrust and democratic institutions. Okay, um, that's your vote. Phil. Go that, ahead, would have, Phil. that would have been my vote too. That that would have been my vote is distrust and democratic institutions. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, climate change. Okay, you're all wrong. Uh, they if if you answered, let's see if anybody in the chat can you just yeah. Uh, no, okay, if you answered Ukraine. You would be correct. Google started this very important problem of disinformation to align itself with NATO war narratives. Oh, Interestingly okay. enough, I mean, they could have started with any d dangerous narrative in the world. Um, they could have started with childhood obesity. Uh, they could start by helping elderly people learn to identify online scams. Wouldn't that be something like right. Google is actually going to help you not get scammed? Uh, by scammers so and social got, security scammers. Right, like if you got an email, like grandma got an email and it was like, so secure, we're gonna give you more in your social security check, click here. Like grandma, don't do that. A prince from a yeah, Any of prince. those things. Yeah. Um, you notice from this list that the only topics on the list of things they want to uh, counter about misinformation are topics that will either give governments or corporations more power, if you do not question I that. have a question about and that that's, though. That's something I wanna, D does that, Fill it first, and then David. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, so that was what I was going to point out here was the where it says there at the bottom, like the authoritarian propaganda, and distrust in democratic institutions. What that's saying is basically like anything put out by people we don't like, then we want to that that's disinformation. So if it's authoritarian propaganda, but what about like democratic institution propaganda? That's actually something they're going to be doing for them. Yes. So they're actually going to be producing propaganda for the democratic institutions they like, while while like stifling yes. authoritarian right. propaganda. I mean, it's interesting. They're like just basically saying, we're going to get in bed with these guys right now. And we'll just make their own propaganda for them. Because that's what it because feels that's like. what they're saying. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> and my question is, does that mean they're going to open up so that if I search something, I get all the results? I just get told which one is propaganda or are they going to continue to do what they already do? Because you can't find information that's valid on any of that stuff already. So it's like let's, it's already been. Let's take a look at how they do it. Um, okay. how they're inoculating you. Um, and we'll see if that, I, I don't think that really answers your question, but we'll see. Um, again, you know, none of these things on this list are about anything that would do anyone like really be good for humanity. It's only good for corporate interest. Um, like normalize not drinking, right? That would be a nice one or stop feeding children too much sugar. Be kind to all people based on their skin color, not not based on their focus skin on, color. Focus on focus on who you are, not what. Right, you uh, are. like inclusive humanity. You know those kind of things. Yeah, I, I guess like sure, there's a lot of misinformation there about alcohol and food and sugar and education. And I'll, I was just listening to an, this Amer uh, no, an honestly podcast about misinformation about how children learn to read and how these women got super rich in the 80s and 90s, drove Maseratis by peddling this reading program that actually was completely independent ineffective and children did not learn to read um huh. and like those are things that abs absolutely we could use some misinformation uh aid about but that's not what we're doing um so i think this makes it clear that 
the corporate idea of disinformation is really only related to corporate and government interest, not at all in human interest, or else they would just would use it differently. So let's take a look at how they applied this to a problem in Ukraine. Uh, this is a pre-bunk video that I thought was very successful. Remember, they ran this in Poland, so it is in Polish, and uh, there are subtitles. Wojna w Ukrainie trwa nie tylko w terenie, ale także w twoim telefonie. Żeby wygrać tę wojnę, niektórzy będą próbować tobą manipulować, robiąc z Ukraińców kozła ofiarnego i winiąc ich za twoje problemy. Hej, wszystko gra? Pytam, jak ci idzie szukanie mieszkania. Przez tych Ukraińców nie mogę znaleźć mieszkania. Co? Polacy nie mają już gdzie mieszkać. Rząd zabiera nam mieszkanie i rozdaje za darmo Ukraińcom. Uważasz, że to wina Ukraińców? Nie rób z nich kozła ofiarnego. Kozła ofiarnego? No, nie zwalaj wszystkich swoich problemów i nieszczęść na innych. To absurd. Sprawdzałeś, kto to napisał? Co to w ogóle za strona? Co to za różnica? Po co ktoś ma mnie oszukiwać? Na przykład, żeby odwrócić twoją uwagę. Żebyś obwinił uchodźców za wszystkie swoje problemy, zamiast skupić się na wojnie, której tutaj sprowadziła. Jeśli ktoś twierdzi, że złożone problemy są winą konkretnej osoby czy grupy, to może być manipulacja. Kozioł ofiarny to jedna z najczęściej używanych technik szerzenia dezinformacji. Nie daj się manipulować. Wow. Okay. So, I think the spirit of this is fine. You shouldn't reduce your problems to any one group of people. Mm -hmm. um, they are also telling us, though, not to blame anything on refugee problems when there are, in fact, refugee problems in the world. Uh, in well, many places. In Poland, I mean, Poland is under the weight of five million refugees. Yes. Like that's a it's a valid question to ask. How will Poland survive an influx of refugees? That is not represented in this video. Um, you know, we have shown you the research showing that there is a refugee problem in Poland. You shouldn't feel hateful and grumbly like this dude about it. Right. But listening to Google tell you to go brush those questions aside doesn't solve any problems either. Like. Right. How is the Western world supposed to meaningfully absorb immigrants from all war-term places, not just Ukraine? Right. Uh, how will countries continue to provide for Ukraine? How will we make sure that Ukrainians are not getting special treatment above immigrants from other countries that are also suffering and in line at refugee programs? Uh, what kind of Ukrainians that could not immigrate and had to stay, that couldn't leave Ukraine and had to stay there and fight a war they don't want? What about those people, right? right. These are all valid questions and Google's basically telling you, knock that off and be the kind of person who sits casually in a cafe, please. <laughs> don't, yeah, just be a neutral person. Go on antidepressants so you don't feel one way or the other. You're not too volatile and you're not too down here. Just be steady Eddie, just in simple Google search results. That's what they want. Right. And Stupid so critical thinkers. Yeah. Right. Um, well, a post. My, my question. Sorry. Yeah. My, my question would be like, I wonder if we'll see anything from Google this like pro labor union to inoculate people so they're not against unions. You know that they would be quiet on that one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And someone in the chat says 1.5 million refugees, Clayton, not 5 million. No, we've talked to sources in Poland uh, who said it's, it could even be higher than 5 million. So that's that's even being conservative. Those are numbers that come from sources we've had here on the show specifically. But maybe those numbers change. You know, the government's not coming out with official numbers anyway. Sorry. Well, this is a, a project from Jigsaw, which is a branch of Google that's working on this. And they said that negative stories about refugees have real world impacts because there's been 65 attacks on refugee shelters in Germany alone, which is not nothing. But imagine throwing all the weight of Google to solve a problem in the world for something that's happened 65 times. Uh, of course, that shouldn't be happening, but there's child trafficking in the world that they could be trying to solve, right? But, but not just something that's like happened 65 times in Germany. Um, abuse of other groups happens much higher incidence. Like all of this money in towards this problem, you would almost think that they were doing this to get us to support the NATO side of the war. Hmm. Uh, here is where they ran these ads as a test. Um, you can see Poland, uh, Czech, Czech and Czech and Slovakia um, on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, after these users saw these ads, they gave them a survey containing one to three questions to determine if the ads afterwards they could better identify fear-mongering, and scapegoating. Um, this is how they gave us those metrics. They didn't show us the survey, and this is not a peer-reviewed study, so I can't vouch for whether or not the questions they asked these people after seeing the ads were valid or reliable, uh, but they think they were, so I'm sure they were, right? Yeah, uh, that's sarcasm. Sure. But they showed 
they showed that it could help these small percentages like feel differently after online tutorials. Um, so what's next now? What are they going to do? Well, more. They say that they're moving new pre-bunking experiments in uh, India and Germany with local partners and experts. Now, I wonder what disinformation they seem to think is necessary in those regions and who gets to decide. Um, here is one pre-bunking experiment they're working on, anti-vaccine narratives. Um, so my question is, who's partnering with them about this? Someone that may have a vested interest? Hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, well, will Pfizer, Moderna have anything to do with this? Now, the Associated Press says, I didn't see this in Google's information, but this was in the AP story about it, that the effects of these videos, of these inoculation videos, wears off. Like, you might think critically for a while and then you forget. Like a vaccine. Like core training. Like the COVID vaccine. It wears off after. Uh, yes. And so they need <laughs> boosters. <laughs> what? Can I, I just want to, I would say if I understand this correctly, like basically if you, if you're, you're, what you're talking about is that you're talking about like change people's behavior, like core beliefs, like you're, they're, they're, they're aiming at your core beliefs. They're, they're aiming at your morals and, and like your, your like entire world paradigm. And they think that that just, that if that changes, it just kind of reverts back. Yeah. Like is that, that just like, yeah, that, that, that blows my mind. Like it's I, like maybe, an exercise maybe I work differently than the people they, yeah. Yeah, so they're thinking that you need boosters. Booster videos, they use this term. I guess they think that we have a positive connotation with it these days. Um, but they think they need to do booster uh, pre-bunking videos to keep users sharp, um, which is funny uh, because you know pre-bunking inoculation with boosters, these are words I increasingly do not want to hear. Right. Uh, but the question remains, why is Google doing this? They have not been a moral authority, at least not in their inception. They were a ranking information. That's all they did. I mean, we know they do a lot more, they're but now they're money. promoting narratives. They're doing it for money. They want Google to be what they see as a safe place for advertisers, right? So it's the same reason mm -hmm. that they block us on YouTube. They, you know, shadow ban channels. They can make plenty of money off of our channel through advertising, but they push down because they they want to make um, this platform and Google like a like a, an advertiser friendly place. And so if Pfizer, Moderna and all of these companies can continue to funnel them all sorts of billions of dollars in advertising revenue for their pharmaceuticals and everything, then it's in it's a safe environment for Google. Imagine if Pfizer execs are sitting there and they're thinking about where to put their ad dollars. Yeah. And they start seeing Google search results that are like Pfizer this, Pfizer that, Moderna this. They downrank all of this stuff to push that stuff away and they continue to make their good ad revenue. But now they don't even have to produce ads anymore because Google is essentially doing it for them. So right. imagine what a pre-bunking video would look like around a COVID vaccine. You right. know, you'd see some grumbly dude with a dark hat like that guy. Like, oh, you know, these these things, I'm not going to take them because my uncle said Bill Gates, blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. Um, I, I can't even well, like repeat so some it, of the narratives I, here. So, so like what the thing is, like this is just like in, in such short. It, it hasn't been all that long ago. What, like a couple of weeks since the Davos uh, had that brain transparency, yeah. you know, seminar where they're like, this is all this is all exactly what they were talking about at Davos. It was like that yeah. brain transfer. Well, this is They're like basically like we need to get into people's brains. Yeah. Because I feel them. like they know they know that they are losing the information war and now they're going to have to go outside of us going to them because lately, like recently it's us going to them to search for information, but we have found ourselves. You can't find good information there. So the people that are uh, not going on or looking outside of Google. So now they have to find ways to win the information war by going outside of that with marketing campaigns to pull us back into their narrative. They're losing us. Yeah. That's what I see. Yeah. I mean, you've seen this too with cable news. And of course you're seeing with the mainstream media and they're having to just, I don't know, it's a losing battle because independent media continues to rise, the rise of rumble and so forth and rise of alternative video platforms. They're going to keep getting stronger and keep getting stronger and adding new users and adding new users. Um, you saw what happened to Facebook. I mean, it, that whole population is being aged out on Facebook. 
right? Like yeah. there's no new users, although they said there were, but I don't buy that for a second. They, new people aren't coming into Facebook. Like, who's today deciding no, to wake up a young person like my son's like, you know, dad, can you help me set up one of them Facebook accounts? No. <laughs> no. Could you if imagine? You were, if, if you were getting new users, you wouldn't be laying off 14,000 people. You wouldn't be losing thousands of people at your, at your yeah. place if you were doing better. I know when they had their most recent Facebook had their most recent earnings call and they said they added all sorts of new users. I was like, what? After a quarter where they announced they had their first round of like huge decline in users and no new, you like where are these new users suddenly coming from? It all sounded fake to me in order yeah. to prop up a stock. Like, I don't know. So I think you're, you're right about this. I think that there's like, I don't know. They're, they're trying to make it nicer, but it's a losing battle because eventually people are going to turn off, you know, turn away from Google fully and go to other services um, like they are on, you know, YouTube, but finally starting to move towards Rumble and other platforms. Yeah. I like Lyndon uh, Watson in the chat calls this IQ blockers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. All right. You have the last word on that. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.